Namaste, welcome to Savi's Fashion Studio. I'm Savita. In this class, let's see how to stitch this sweatshirt with a ribbed neckline, cuff, and waistband. The fabrics used in this class is available on our website. Now, if you remember, in the previous class on sublimation printing, we had printed two strips of fabric which will be used in the sweatshirt on the sleeves. Though we show pattern drafting in most of our classes, we also get a lot of requests for ready patterns, and that's the reason we have made the ready pattern of this sweatshirt available on our website in different sizes. So when you buy it, we ship it to you or we can send it in the PDF format which you need to download and print. I'm using my 4 thread overlock machine to stitch this sweatshirt. If you are using your electric home sewing machine, you can use the stretch stitch or the zigzag stitch to sew this. Now if you do not wish to buy the ready pattern, you can make your own pattern similar to what you have learned in hooded sweatshirt class. The link is given in the description. So let's start. Now if you do not wish to buy the ready pattern, you can draft the pattern for this sweatshirt in the same way as you have learned in our hooded sweatshirt class. The link is given in the description. As this is supposed to be loose, I have added 1.5 inches ease here on chest and hip and the length has to be reduced by around 2 to 2.5 inches depending on the rib width. So I have reduced around 2.5 inches because we will be adding the rib. Now the only change I have made here is the neckline because we will be adding a half inch rib neckline so I've kept the front depth at 4 inches when we add the half an inch ribbed neckline the ready front neck depth would be three and a half inches and back I've kept the depth at 3 4 inch and we'll be adding a half an inch ribbed neckline the sleeve drafting also is shown in the hooded sweatshirt class now here in the sweatshirt that I'm making in this video there is a center piece in the sleeve which is optional so I'm not showing that if you want you can draft that too I'm using this ready pattern in this class. So let's start. First, let me explain the pattern pieces that you'll be getting when you order the ready pattern on a website. Now here I'm showing a large size pattern. Now this is the front pattern piece. If you see here, it's mentioned as FRT, which stands for front into one. That means you need to cut one on fabric. This is the back pattern piece. It's mentioned as BK into one. Into one means you need to cut one piece on fabric. Now the sleeve pattern has three pieces. As you see in the design here, there is a center piece which is attached separately in the sleeves. BK stands for back, so this is the back part of the sleeve. FRT stands for front, so this is the front part of the sleeve. This is the center part of the sleeves. Now you see the center piece is extended here, which will be part of the shoulder and this will be the part of the neckline. As we cut the fabric and sew it, this will be more clear. Now these three pieces make one sleeve. So you need to cut two of each of these pieces on fabric. So it's mentioned sleeve into two. So you need to cut two of these. Now this piece is cuff rib, that is the rib for the sleeves. You need to cut two of these. Now this is a full pattern. It will be folded in half. This is a fold line. This is the bottom rib, that is, this will be attached at the waistband. Again, this is the fold line, so it will be folded in this way. This pattern piece is for the ribbed neckband. You need to cut one of this on fabric. This pattern piece is for the neck tape, which goes at the back of the neckline. So the total number of pattern pieces for this sweatshirt is 9. Now we'll cut the fabric and sew the sweatshirt step by step using the serger. All these pattern pieces include a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So you don't need to add anything extra when cutting on fabric. And if you remember in the previous class on sublimation printing we had printed these two strips. Now this I'll be using for the center piece of the sleeves in this way. Now it's not necessary that you have to print something for the center piece. You can use a same fabric or you can use a different colored knit fabric for the center piece of the sleeve. I'm just using this and and for the neckband and waist rib I have this rib fabric here. I'll be using this white one. So it is to be folded in this way. I'm making this sweatshirt with this polyester fleece fabric. It has fleece on the inside. So let's cut the fabric. 
this is the selvage so this is the wrong side this fabric is uh, 400 gsm it's a thick fabric now i'm laying only one layer i have around one and a half meters of fabric here and the width of this fabric is 72 inches now i have taken only one layer of fabric because we have full pattern here so we need to cut one of back pattern and one of front so first always lay the bigger pieces of pattern on the fabric and then with the remaining fabric you can always cut the small pieces of pattern so let the grain line of the pattern be parallel to the selvage. Once you place the pattern, place some fabric weight. I am using this water erasable pen to mark all around. Now in the remaining fabric here, we can cut the sleeves. That is, after we cut the bodice pattern, we can fold the fabric and lay the sleeves pattern because we need to cut two of this. Now this is only one layer, so we need to make two layers and then place the pattern and cut it. And the center part of the sleeves will be cut on this printed fabric as I explained earlier so I'll keep this aside we'll cut this later now we'll mark all this and then cut accordingly now you don't need to add anything extra because these patterns already have the seam allowance needed so just mark exact and cut exactly on the marking I'll not show the marking and cutting because you already know how to do that so I'll quickly do this and then we'll cut the center part of the sleeves and then we need to cut the rib for the waist and the neckband. I cut the back and front. Now with the left over width of the fabric we can cut the sleeve. So I still have so much. Now as we need two layers for the sleeves, I'll fold it in this way. So I have two layers of fabric here. I'll place it in this way and cut the fabric. Just let me do one. As this can be the common line, I'll place the other sleeve on this line and mark. To identify the back sleeves, I am doing a small notch here. So this is done. I'll keep this aside. Now I'm cutting the sleeve centerpiece on this printed strip of fabric. Now I'll place this right on right and I'll place the pattern in this way and cut exactly as for the pattern. I'll be using this rib for the sweatshirt we are making in this video. Now let's cut the rib. But before that, let me just show you how we get the rib in the roll. This is how it is. And when you order on a website, we cut on this cutting mark and send this strip of rib. This is the right side which feels smooth when you run your finger on this tipping. This is called the tipping. On the wrong side, if you run your finger on the tipping, you can feel it slightly raised. And that is where it has to fold. So it folds in this way and then you attach. This rib fabric is 650 GSM and can be used in sweatshirts, pullovers, jackets, etc. So just to show you an example, this is how it looks once you have used it. A little part of the tipping goes to the wrong side. So on the rib fabric we need to cut these patterns. One is the waistband, the other is the sleeve cuff and the neckband. Now first let me cut the sleeve cuff. Then similarly cut for the waistband and neckband as well. As we need two for sleeves, I'll fold this only as much as needed. I'm folding the pattern at the center line, that is the fold line. I 
I'll cut off this little excess and do the same for the other as well. Now similarly cut for the bottom waistband and neckband and then we'll start sewing. Now let me explain the sewing before we actually go to the sewing machine. This is a little different from what you normally do with the t-shirt. Now this is the right side of the back and this is the wrong side. Now take the back sleeves and we'll attach the back sleeves to the back part. So we can identify the back sleeve because of the slip that we made. Place it right sides facing each other. So this sleeve goes to this side and this sleeve goes to the other side. Now we are doing this because there is a center strip in the sleeve which goes all the way to the the shoulder so we need to attach this first and then similarly attach the front sleeve with the front part and then we'll be attaching the strip now I'm using my serger to attach this and as I serge I'll be trimming off 1 8 of an inch because we have given a 3 8 inch seam allowance now if you don't have a serger and if you're doing it on your domestic electric home sewing machine you can use your zigzag stitch and reduce the width to the minimum and then sew it 3 8 inch in from the edge so once this is done take your front piece and in the same way as you do the back, attach the front sleeve to the front armhole, placing it right on right. So let's start sewing. So I've taken this back piece and I'm placing the back sleeve, aligning the edges. And as I search, I'll be trimming off one eighth of an inch. So I've put this guide here. Now similarly sew the other side. The front sleeve is attached to the front part and back sleeves are attached to the back part. Now I've taken the front and the back. Now we'll be attaching the center piece of the sleeve in this way so this shape goes to the front in this way and then connects to the back so place it right on right i'm doing the front first so this part will be attached to the front from the neckline to the shoulder and all the way down to the sleeve hem so serge it in the same way trimming off one eighth of an inch and then we'll be turning this placing right on right with the back and attaching this is the front neckline i've taken this strip and placing it right on right this is the right side of the front this is the right side of the fabric strip when you have stitched half the way just check if everything matches, do not stretch the fabric as you search. So this is how it will be. Now attach the back or you can do the same for the other side of the front and then attach the back. I'll show attaching the back. Now place the back right side on the right side of the strip. Now I'll start stitching from the sleeve hem. So this is the back sleeve. This is the strip of fabric. Place it right on right and serge in the same way. Now this is how it looks, this is the front, this is the back and then there is the center strip. It looks a little puffed here but once we press with a hot iron it will be nice and smooth. Now do the same for the other side. So I have stitched both the sides, now turn it inside out. 
and place the right sides of the front and back sleeves together and we'll start serging all the way from the hem of the sleeve through the underarm make sure the seams match at the underarm and then all the way down to the waist so I'll start from here from the sleeve hem If you do not stretch the fabric as you search, this should match perfectly. Now do the same for the other side. Now I have taken the sleeve cuff. It was in this way. Open it. This is the right side. Keep right sides together and search here. Now fold it. Now this is the right side with the wider tipping and this goes to the inside. The folding has to be correct so that the tipping looks even all around. What I mean when I say folding has to be right is the tipping should be shown more towards the right side. Now it's very easy to fold because on the wrong side, one side of the tipping is a little raised. You just need to fold it over. It just automatically folds at that part that is the raised part. So fold equally and get this ready as well. Now we'll attach the cuff to the sleeve. This is the right side of the sleeve and this is right side of the cuff. The wider tipping should come on top so this is how it should be so turn it in this way then put the sleeve inside align the edges of the sleeve and the cuff now the sleeve opening is bigger than the cuff we need to stretch the cuff and stitch it to the sleeve so start at one place and as you stitch stretch the cuff and attach to the sleeve now stretch to rib and align with the sleeve and then stitch when you reach where you started overlap a little So this is done. Do the same for the other side. Now take the waist rib and again open, keep right on right and insert the edges. Now turn to the right side, fold in half. Now take the waist of the sweatshirt. This is the right side, this is the wrong side. Take the rib. This is the part which goes inside with the thinner tipping. This should come to the right side. So put it in this way. That is, we are aligning the edges of the rib with the waist of the sweatshirt. Let the joint of the rib be aligned to the side seam. Now the rib is cut a little smaller than the waist of the sweatshirt. So again here also we need to stretch the rib very slightly and then stitch. When you stretch the rib, make sure you stretch it evenly so that you don't get gathers at one place. So this is done. Now let's finish the neckline. This is the neckband. Again, place it right on right and search the short ends. Now turn, now 
Now we are doing the neck band, similar to what we did in the cuff and waistband. Turn it in this way so that the tipping is to the outside. And this is the right side of the neckline. Put the neckline inside the neck band. Again, the neck band is smaller than the neckline. We need to stretch as we stitch. Now the seam of the rib. Let it go a little towards the back. So this is the back shoulder seam. I'm placing it around one inch to the back. Now start and then as we did earlier, stretch the rib and sew it all around. Start first and then stretch the rib. The neckline is done. Now we have finished the whole sweatshirt using the serger but only for attaching the neck tape we will need to use a sewing machine. This is attached to stabilize the neckline because as you wear it you will be stretching the neckline. So this will keep that in shape and also it looks nice because this conceals the seam and also it conceals the raw edges of the brand label. Now we will be sewing this neck tape only at the back neckline from one seam to other. This has a little stretch and it's mainly used for knit fabrics. I'm taking only the seam of the back neckline and attaching the tape in this way that is close to the stitch here. Lock it the beginning. Put everything aside and only take the seam. I'll stitch it to the next shoulder seam and then cut off the excess. Now turn it in this way and we'll sew the other edge down and also insert the label. For that you need to find the center of the back neckline. Just fold it and find the center. Do a small marking if needed. This is our brand label for ready-made apparels. So find the center of the label as well and place it and also if you have a size label you can use it. Now I'll change to the zipper foot because it is easier to sew as it is thick here. Lock at the beginning. Keep this nice and flat and then stick. Lock at the end. So this is done. Now we'll lightly press all the seams and it's ready to wear. This is done and this is how it looks. Now we need to lightly steam press all the seams so that it lies flat. So I'm turning the seam upwards and pressing it with steam iron. So you see the difference once you press it. Similarly do here. Now I have finished this sweatshirt using only the serger and we have used the sewing machine only to attach the neck tape which is optional but it looks very good if you attach. Now you also can do a top stitch using a flat lock machine. Let me just show you to give you an idea. Now if you see here there is a stitch on top which is used doing a flat lock machine. This is optional. If you want you can keep it just like that or do a top stitch with the flat lock machine. As I've used a 4 thread serger to stitch this, there's no need for another stitch because the overlock stitch itself has a reinforcing stitch so that itself is enough. So the pattern for this sweatshirt, the fabric, the rib, the neck tape, everything can be bought on our website savvysfashionstudio.com. Thanks for watching this class. See you soon in the next class. Until then, happy sewing.